this tutorial we're going to go over ScanF. ScanF is very useful. It allows you to get three. We're going to use it to get three different types of data, and it's really easy to do it. You can get a character, a number, or a string, and it's real easy. Um, what um, ScanF? Like I can make it where if I type in the number forty, it'll literally read it as forty, or it can I can make it read it as the character four and zero. Um, I can also make it just read the first, just read one character instead of an entire string and just return the four. Like I can make a select Y or N and the user can type in Y or N or I can make it where it can do a full string of yes or no or I can make it where they type in like a number one or zero. So scan apps really, really useful for user input. So I'm going to show you how to use it. First, we're going to write something onto the screen. So, met a prompt. So we need to write some kind of prompt on the screen. So for the prompt, I'm just going to write prompt because I'm not really feeling like thinking of for the prompt to say anything right now. And so we need to push message call printf. And we also want to write extern scanf up there, in case you didn't see that already. Anytime we go over something like scanf or printf or something like that, we got to put it at the top and um, include it externally. So then um, add sp4 like we've been doing. Now what we want to do is um, scanf takes two parameters, like printf took one and printf um, just it took the one parameter of what we wanted to print on the screen. Scanf takes two parameters which may seem annoying but it's actually really useful and it's why scanf is so good. Um, it takes two parameters one the format of what you want it to read and then where you want it to send the data to. So to create a format, we're just going to write the name, whatever we want to name our format. I'm just going to name it FMT, define bytes, quote, quote, comma, zero. In these quote is your format. So to put create your format, we put a percent sign and then the character for our format. If you press a D, that's a double. It will read numbers. If you put a C, that will read characters, a single character. And if you put an S, that will read a string. It'll read an entire string but it'll actually read it to the first space but it'll read in full strings which is pretty useful so I'm gonna start with comma um, let's say comma C or comma S we're gonna read in a string then you gotta reserve the bytes of where you want it that to go so we're going to I'm gonna just call this I am INP for input or let's say IPT for input I want to just name this one INPT and this is where I'm going to send the data to that the user types in and I'm going to reserve bytes which in NASM you use RES instead of just an R so we're going to reserve bytes and I'm going to reserve just a thousand bytes so give a or I want to reserve a thousand I, th I don't think I can reserve a thousand because it's a byte and I don't think bytes will go over um, a thousand I know in 16-bit assembly they don't I don't know about 32-bit I can run this real quick and see if it gives me some kind of error nope just fine so I can reserve a thousand um, so what you need to do is first you need to push um, where where you want to send the data to. I'm going to send it to um, NPT. And then you want to push in your format, how you want to format it, FMT. Then you want to call ScanF and then you want to add ESP8 just to clear those parameters. And then we want to do that we're going to push INPT then we're going to call printf and then add ESP4. This will um, write. This will let us pause and let us type something in. 
then it's going to read what we type in and it's going to print that onto the screen so whatever we type in is going to be wrote onto the screen and our string for or and our format was a string so now if we build this as you can see it's going to say prompt and I type in John it's going to write John back onto the screen because now INPT holds the um, this address is the has the value of John now let's change it to a C percent C so this will make it only get a single character so now if I type in something like John it's just going to do J because it only reads a single character so that's how you get a single character input and now I'm going to do a D D's double you really want to use doubles for input because double will work with printf and scanf and everything it's just compatible now when we run this and if I type in the number 70 it's going to write F onto the screen because when I print something onto the screen all characters have an ASCII value so um, when I get a number in with scanf it gets a literal number so if I type in 70, it's going to literally write the number 70 onto the screen, not the character of 7 and a 0. So when it tries to write the literal number 70 onto the screen, it's read as a capital F, because a capital F has the ASCII value of 70. And as you can see, if I run this again and type in 71, I get a G. Or if I type in 67, I get a C. Or 65, I get an A. Um, or even 66 and I get a or 64 and I get a um, at symbol so that's just how you use scanf scanf like I said can easily be used to get numbers with D you the double you can use s to get strings or you can use C to get a single character so scanf is really good for user input